So I just passed $25,000 per month in monthly reoccurring revenue with my one person go high level lead generation agency. And if I go into my actual SAS uh, dashboard here, you guys can see that, you know, the revenue is real and these are actual clients. Okay. Because um, if you start watching content about go high level or creating a marketing agency, sometimes you will see people leverage, you know, product sales or course sales or affiliate sales to, you know, show people the go high level business model. And in my experience, actually getting clients, getting them to pay for your service, getting them results is a lot tougher than just getting affiliates or selling courses. And I can tell you firsthand because I do both. And so this revenue specifically is from generating clients, people that pay me for the services I provide with Go High Level and Facebook ads. And so in this video, I'm going to show you what I did to get here. And like I said, I just crossed $25,000 per month. This is monthly reoccurring revenue. I'm a one person team and I'm on track to hit $30,000 a month in just a matter of time. So I started my marketing agency in 2016 and I can tell you that it literally took me years to get here to where I'm able to tell you one, I have a predictable system for generating leads for my business, and I also have a predictable system that gets my clients actual results. So I work with real estate investors, so that's my niche. I help them find off-market deals, so people that have properties that they need to sell uh, before they list it on the actual market. So in this video, I'm going to show you, one, how I achieve an 85% profit margin with my agency, how I've been able to get 617 leads with a cost per lead of 200, or $2.53 per lead, and this is for my business. And I'm also gonna show you how I get automated leads and appointments for my clients that leads them into results. We just had a client yesterday get three deals from the system, so I'm gonna you know, briefly cover that in this video, and I'm also making another video that's gonna be breaking down you know, that client's uh, case study. And I'm also gonna cover eight ways to optimize your Facebook ads performance. So if you intend on running a go high level marketing agency where you are either running Facebook ads for these types of clients or you intend on having them do it themselves through the software, there's really eight ways to optimize Facebook ads performance. And I've just kind of distilled those in these videos so that you know people aren't constantly guessing about what they should do to improve their ads performance. And it's really simple once you have a proven framework, which I'll be talking about in this video. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you how I streamline communication between all of my clients because you know you may be wondering how can one person you know manage this type of system and also I really don't work a whole lot. I'll show you my daily workflow and what I do to keep this running and growing. Um, but you know I see a lot of people where they're at their first few thousand dollars in sales or maybe they don't even have clients yet and they're thinking about hiring people and you know, adding all these other you know, pieces to the puzzle. But um, I've really focused the last few years on seeing how much one individual person can produce. And I'm not even close to maxing out um, the amount of time that I'm willing to spend on this business model. So I haven't even come close to hitting the threshold of what this type of model can produce. So this is a great model for anyone, maybe that's if you're working a job, maybe you have a nine to five and you wanna potentially quit that job one day or maybe like me, you know, I was in college, I didn't want to go the traditional path. And I always wanted to work remotely and work online. That was something I always wanted to do. So this is the perfect business model for this. It's not easy. But in this video, I'm going to break down, you know, how I'm able to do this and, um, you know, kind of give you some gold nuggets as to what I've learned along the way. So let's get into it. So this is a breakdown of the actual business model. So you can see here, $25,000 per month in monthly reoccurring revenue. And this is a combination of really two products. They're basically the same product, and I'll explain that in a bit. Um, but it's basically the same product. It's just priced differently, and there's a little bit of a, a difference because one is done for you. So one is uh, a service where I run ads for clients and manage their system. And then another uh, product is what I call do-it-yourself, where individuals that may not want to hire an agency, maybe they have the time to actually learn the skill of running Facebook ads, they can run their own ads through my software. And so there's a combination of done-for-you clients and do-it-yourself clients. And really, I, on average, get about two to four paid calls per week from investors that are interested in my actual service for either done-for-you or do-it-yourself. And some people also just sign up directly. They don't book a call. Um, but, you know, I don't need to have, you know, 50 calls a week to get a few clients. You know, most people that are running ads or doing cold outreach, um, you're constantly dealing with, trying to fill up your calendar, trying to get people to show up, trying to get people to be interested in what you're doing. And you know, at one point I was running that type of business model. I was spending you know, five, $6,000 um, a month on ads and my calendar was like absolutely full. 
but most people didn't really know what they clicked on. They didn't really, I mean, some that's going to happen with any sort of, you know, advertising system or something like that. But, um, you know, I just had a full calendar. My whole week was literally just taking calls. And a lot of the time I was just saying the same thing to each individual person. And so I made a shift in my business, you know, about two years ago where I went all in on YouTube, which is obviously where you guys are watching me here. And I've created a blend of content. So this type of content is somebody is for somebody who's interested in creating a go high level agency or just making money online. And then I create other pieces of content where they're specifically targeted to, you know, my type of ideal client. Now, those videos don't get nearly as much views, but I get actual clients from those types of videos. So I'll talk about that in a second. But this is pretty much the actual breakdown here. Um, and these are the actual expenses that go into running this type of business. So um, one of those is go high level, which is $497 per month. And this basically allows me to create unlimited client accounts. So really, once you get, you know, that first client to pay you 500 bucks or more, um, every new client after that is pretty much pure profit. So you know, I've already passed that threshold where, you know, go high level to me is basically free from an agency perspective. And then in addition to that, I'm also a top go high level affiliate. So, you know, I make commission from people that I share the software with. Um, but like I said, I actually use go high level. This is what I run this entire business model on and it would not be possible. Uh, well, it could be possible without it, but it would take a lot more time um, and potentially another person. So go high level. I see it as like my team of uh, people that basically just do all of the, the automation and all of the different components that make up the system for me. So, you know, to me, this is not even, I don't even worry about this expense, but I obviously do pay for it. So when you're starting out, you know, this may be, you know, you may not be able to afford this. Um, you know, you don't have to start at this, this plan, you can start at their $97 uh, per month plan, and that'll give you three clients. So um, if you can get those first three clients, you can max out all your sub accounts and basically, you know, everything after that, you know, you can upgrade as you get more clients. Same with Upex. So Upex is what I use to run all of the Facebook ads that I use for my clients. And what Upex allows me to do is really turn my uh, ads system into a product. So you're going to see this theme throughout this entire video. Um, I like products. I like things that are clear cut. You know, if you pay for this specific thing, you're going to get a product, right? I'm not going back to the drawing board, trying to come up with a custom strategy for every client and, you know, reinvent the entire thing with every new client. So that's a huge reason as to why I'm able to run this business model without requiring a lot of time or any additional employees or, or staff. Because with Go High Level and with Upex, I can basically productize the funnel and automation system, which I'll talk about through High Level and its snapshot feature. And then with Upex, I can productize what I, you know, use for ads as a proven product. So I'm not, you know, manually creating campaigns, manually trying to come up with, you know, a bunch of new ads and then having to apply that across a bunch of accounts. With Upex, you can create templates and I just have my internal templates I use for clients. And, you know, if I need to, you know, apply that, that specific template to another client with a few clicks, I can just push it to their account. So these two things really give me a lot of leverage because they're software and I don't have to worry about, you know, like I said, having to train someone to do these things. Once you set them up, they're pretty simple to run. Now, the other expenses here are HelloSign. So this is just a contract software that I use. Go High Level does have a contract, um, you know, feature now. So this potentially will get eliminated over time. And this is just for me to send, you know, one two page contract to all of the people that are signing up for the done for you service. And so I just send them, you know, a two page contract. It's just templated out. It's the same, you know, contract that I sent to literally everyone. And, you know, that's what I use HelloSign for. And then Zapier. So I use Zapier for a few of my products that I have to, you know, other go high level businesses. But for this business model specifically, I also use Zapier to send um, leads to some of our clients use other systems. So I won't get into too much of that in this video, but let's say a client, you know, uses a, an external CRM to manage their leads like pipe drive or something like that. Um, you know, we can basically send the leads from go high level to their system. And I use Zapier to do that and automate that process. I also pay for a software called simple invoices. So this is basically just a super simple way for me to send invoices to people that, um, are not, you know, through the automated billing within Stripe and the SaaS configurator. So this is just a simple software I've used to, you know, collect payments here. Then obviously with a business, you got to pay for internet. And then um, Slack I use for all communication with clients, which I'll show you in a bit. And then I also pay for 
um, chat GPT plus as well as the API usage. So this can vary month to month, but for clients or do it yourself clients that have our chat GPT add on, basically, you know, I, as the agency pay for the API usage and, you know, it's, it's like pennies to send a message. So it's really not a lot. And then I also use Fiverr, um, just basically ad hoc. So whenever I need new images created for ads or, you know, video content, I'll order a video here. So this is not, you know, a fixed expense here. Um, but you know, I will order videos or images from, you know, contractors on Fiverr and then QuickBooks. This is just to organize all of the accounting. I have an accountant as well. And then, um, bank fees, which that's a whole other video. I use a really cool bank that allows me to, um, automate, you know, different accounts, d distribution to different accounts based on percentages. So I'm always profitable and I can talk more about that on another video, but, um, I pay $30 for that bank. It allows me to create pretty much unlimited bank accounts. And then from there you can route them based on percentages. So like I said, um, this is a really, really cool system that I implemented probably a year and a half ago. I was trying to do it with other banks, but most banks don't really let you do it the way that this particular bank does. Um, so, you know, this allows me to make sure I can have all of my stuff organized, my operating expenses, my taxes, my profit, all that stuff is organized and automated. So I don't have to, you know, just see one account and think I can just spend whatever's in that account. It's all organized based on folder. So this is really cool. I can do another video breaking down this as well, because I really think every entrepreneur should have um, the system that, you know, I have with the banking because, you know, before I used to just have, you know, what pretty much everyone else has one checking account and one savings account for a business. And whatever you see in that account, you think, oh, well, that's how much I can spend. But um, I've learned that you need to have percentages that go to specific categories. And that allows me to just make sure that everything's extremely profitable. So I can make another video on that, but I do pay for that bank and it's so worth it. Um, and then I also pay out referral fees for, you know, clients that share this done for you service with their friends. And so I have eight people that are basically paying for a monthly subscription. And then I pay out, um, you know, the people that referred, you know, those clients to me a referral fee. So what you'll notice here too, is obviously this is about, you know, $4,000, but none of these are really fixed. You know, I could cancel go high level anytime I could cancel Upex, I could cancel literally any one of these pretty much except for internet. And, you know, I'm not obligated or fixed to really any one of these expenses. So um, that was one of the mistakes that I had made earlier on. I would sign, you know, long agreements or with VAs or whatever it was. And I just really wasn't in the position to do those types of things. I had the right intention. I wanted to grow. Um, but, you know, I've learned, you know, just through basically it's been about seven years of running an agency, um, you know, how to design this so that you're really flexible. So this gives me a lot of peace because I'm not really worried about, like I said, all of these things being obligations and all of these basically save me time and make me money. So they're not really, I mean, they are expenses, but, um, number one, they're not fixed. And number two, they're all basically, um, you know, they've all been pretty much eliminate, like everything that's not essential is eliminated here. So those are the expenses. Now, this is the actual model that I run. So let me zoom in here. So this is the system that I provide to, you know, real estate investors that are looking for off market deals. We run Facebook video and image ads to a three-step funnel where we just have a survey page, a calendar page, and a thank you page. That's it. And if you look at, watch my last video, you'll see I kind of break down really all that's needed to run this model. And then I have um, three phases of text and email follow-up as well as some um, internal automations that make sure the clients get notified when they get a lead and, you know, when they get an appointment and all that good stuff, but it's a really simple snapshot. And because it's so simple, it allows me to get a client up and running. I, I just had someone I enrolled, uh, you know, or I don't even know what day it is. I think it's Tuesday. Um, but I had someone that I had enrolled last week and it took about 40 minutes from start to finish to just set up their account. Most of the time actually comes from the ad account stuff, which I'll get into in a second, but the snapshot itself, um, I could pretty much load up a client's snapshot in, you know, 20 minutes and everything's ready to go. Right. So you got to wait on the A2P approval and some of that stuff. But other than that, I mean, it's a very simple and effective system to run and pretty much doesn't have anything that I don't need. You know, I'm not in there trying to, you know, do, uh, you know, like Google my business stuff. I'm not in there trying to reactivate leads. I'm not in there, you know, trying to do a bunch of different services. It's really just centered around generating leads from Facebook ads and using the go high level three-step funnel here to basically, you know, qualify those leads and send them to my clients. So that's the actual system overview. It's pretty simple. You can see it right there. 
And now I'm going to break down, you know, how I'm actually getting clients. So YouTube organic is my focus right now. Um, you know, that was my focus when I restarted my channel. If you guys go back, look at my videos, I was, you know, creating content for my ideal client. And I basically kind of found a formula that works to create a blend of content. Like I said, for those of you interested in, you know, starting an agency or running your business on high level and also sharing case studies and behind the scenes, um, you know, Facebook ad stuff that would be, you know, valuable to my ideal client. And it actually works. Most people just use the YouTube for those, those big videos or those big audiences where they can get, you know, hundreds of thousands of views. But I found that if you stick to strong fundamentals and you create, you know, actual valuable content for business to business clients, they are searching, they are on YouTube. So, you know, YouTube organic is what I'm using right now to generate, um, you know, calls and clients for my actual business. And you can see here, this is the workflow. It's pretty simple. I create one piece of, of longer form content weekly, and it's usually some form of a case study. So a client getting results with my system or behind the scenes stuff of like how to run ads better or optimize their landing pages, whatever it is. So I create, you know, one of those a week and, um, I also can, you know, I'll either order a thumbnail via Fiverr or I just make one myself in Canva, super simple. And then really the, the key to, you know, YouTube from like a tactical level other than just making really good content, which I would say is probably the most important thing out of all of it, is when you go to upload a video, you'll have the ability to type in certain keywords. And when you type in those keywords, you just wanna make sure they're relevant to your niche. So the keywords that I'll use for, you know, getting clients are gonna be related to real estate investing. And then the keywords I'll use for videos like this are gonna be related to people using Go High Level for an agency. So super simple stuff. You just gotta get out there and start making content. And something I didn't like right here, but is a part of this process is obviously my setup. So I've got a, you know, I don't even, it's a GH5 camera here up there. Um, so I've actually set this up. My cousin helped me, but I set this up to where I've got the camera here. I have my mic and then basically all I do is open up my software loom, which is what I'm recording this on and it pulls my video from the camera and then it, you know, gets high quality audio from the mic and I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to set up a camera or set up a mic. I literally just click a button. I spend my time focusing on making valuable content. I don't want to think about how I'm recording it or you know, going to a set or going outside, like all that stuff just takes away from adding value. So I like to call some of these videos, you know, they're kind of boring. If you're looking for fast edits and text and, you know, animations and stuff, I personally don't really learn that way and retain information that way. So what I've done with my channel is basically the type of content I would want to see. So I like to watch videos that are longer form, they're rich with information, they have depth, they don't leave things out, and it's more conversational. I don't really watch five minute videos that just kind of speed through something and just tell you what to do. I need to kind of see it, I like to, I like to connect with the person. So I haven't really found too many channels that, that do that, that I'm interested in, so I felt like that was an opportunity for me to continue to do that, and it's working. I obviously don't have some huge channel, but um, the people that do watch and the, the overall sentiment that I get from people that watch the content is they will watch, you know, the whole, the whole video, right? And because they do that, they feel like they know me. I'm not hyping stuff up. I'm not, you know, over editing anything. It's pretty much, this is the reality of, you know, what it's going to take to either run your ads or whatever I'm covering. I just show it more candidly, almost as if you were, you know, with me in my office and we're just, you have questions and I'm just kind of showing you on my screen because um, the more I've seen, you know, doctored up content and it's all edited and stuff, I just don't feel like I'm seeing like an authentic view of what's going on and I just don't retain information that way. So yeah, make great content, you know, stick to a, a schedule at least a week, one time a week, just any sort of content you can use to get momentum, um, share case studies behind the scenes, anything you can do to really show people what you do is going to give you leverage because like I said, when I've ran ads and I've gotten people on booked calls, um, you know, I was constantly kind of having to prove that it works and break everything down versus now the calls I do are people, people are already aware of the pricing, aware of what I do. They've watched multiple videos potentially for hours and they're pretty much just ready to sign up and have some, some questions. So it's more of a legitimate consultation versus, you know, a sales call where I'm trying to like, 
you know, basically sell them, right? So that's my YouTube organic workflow. There's obviously more that goes into that, but just to keep it simple, this is, this is really it. And then referrals, um, you know, the way to get referrals is to get clients great results and share the referral program with them when they close a deal. So I like to do it that way because, you know, if you ask for a referral right when they start, you can obviously potentially still get referrals. But I found that when somebody actually closes a deal, makes money from the system, and then I say, hey, if you feel like you have a friend or anyone that you know that would potentially benefit, you know, from this type of a service, you know, I have a referral program. So this has allowed me, like I said, I have eight ongoing clients that have been sourced from referrals. So referrals are really powerful and it gives me, all these things give me peace in running this business model because I know one, I have a system for getting new leads and, and getting new people that are interested in my service. And then I also have people that actually believe in what I'm doing and they're getting results themselves and they're sharing it to, you know, their, their friends versus just, you know, like I'm trying to get a bunch of people on that are just incentivized to make money from the referral program. So that's the referral program. And then Facebook organic. So basically I used a software and that software allowed me to friend a lot of, um, you know, Facebook people. So I would go into groups where there were investors or things like that. And that allowed me to get my friends, uh, up to like, I think it's 3000 friends I have on Facebook. Obviously not all these people see my posts, but I just fully use my, my Facebook personal profile for, um, business and I don't, you really use it for anything else. So I just post case studies there and I have people comment. And then when they comment, I just send them a DM or a post in the comments, a link to my YouTube. So that's how I, you know, really my, my, the hub of my business is the long form content on YouTube and YouTube itself obviously distributes my content. And I even get paid to make the content through AdSense. And then on top of it, I get paid because people sign up and it's literally free. So it takes time and effort, but I really don't see how there's a better way to grow your business than making valuable content. Because when you make valuable content, you don't wake up and feel like I got to go and sell people and get them to buy what I'm doing. I just focus on value. I don't have to think about how I'm recording it or is my setup fancy. I just focus on writing the content, thinking about what's really valuable, what's actually made a difference in my business and the business that I have, you know, that I'm helping my clients with. And I simply share that exactly what I'm doing in this video. And then I also at one point was running Facebook ads. Now this was not a booked call funnel. Um, this was a lead magnet funnel. And this has allowed me to grow, you know, my list of investors that I send emails to whenever I drop a case study or a video. And so this is a really cool way if you're on a limited budget to grow your list. Um, you can see here, I got 617 leads with uh, $2.53 per lead. So you can get a thousand leads for, you know, 2000 bucks or so. And those are all people you can, you know, you could use this strategy initially to grow your list. And as you make content, you can email those people for free and basically get them to start watching your content. And, you know, the majority of people that watch my YouTube content are not subscribed. And I don't even think I, in any of the videos, maybe a few where I've even said to subscribe, but, um, YouTube serves your, your videos to people that basically have watched um, some of your content before. So even if you're not subscribed to someone, if you've watched their video, it's probably gonna pop up on the recommended. So YouTube's a combination of like traffic I get from YouTube is, has come from you know Facebook ads where I email those people to the YouTube. I also get straight traffic from YouTube recommendations and search. And then on top of that, um, you know, I'll push people from Facebook organic to YouTube. So YouTube is the hub and this is something I wanna, you know, share with you guys because I think a lot of people just see YouTube for, um, you know, making these huge videos, but you know, you can really do well with not a whole lot of subscribers. So this is the ads kind of, uh, you know, system that I had ran and this allowed me to just grow my list and get, you know, like I said, 600 investors that were, um, interested in that lead magnet and then I am able to just email them ongoing and get them to videos and I've gotten multiple signups from people that you know were in these filled out this ad a long time ago and they just started watching content and then they come around so YouTube is definitely key now the sales process that I use is pretty simple so with those lead sources that I mentioned I take people just to a paid consultation so if you go to newbreedinvestor.com which is my website um, you can see it's just a one page website and they can basically just book a call with me here and they pay a hundred dollars for the call. So this basically shows intent. They've already basically invested into my time and invested into a consultation. And so the consultation is really a genuine 
consultation. I've had people that are running their own ads and I've told them, you know, like what they're doing is going to work. Just stick with it. I've had people that are working with other agencies and they want me to look at the agency's ads and see, you know, what I think. So it's a genuine consultation. It's not just, all right, you're getting on a call and I'm going to read through my script and, and pitch you. It's, it's a legitimate paid consultation. And, you know, my conversion rate of people that book these calls and sign up, it like basically skyrocketed to when I would just do ads to a free call because like I said, people are, they've seen my results. You know, the pricing for the service is right there. You know, I even put how much they're going to need to spend on ads and they can read through all of this stuff before they book. If they want to see how it works or if it works, they can go to a YouTube video and it just basically explicitly says what we do and, you know, how it works so that they're not like guessing before they sign up and asking me that type of stuff on the call. It's literally more of, you know, these are my specific markets. Um, this is where I'm at in my business. And, you know, can you give me a quote based on what I want to accomplish with the system? And that's really what I like about the calls I do now is they're more consultation slash enrollment calls. They're not sales calls and they're not discovery calls. They've pretty much discovered what I do and how it all works through the videos. So that allows me to basically have myself as a 24 seven sales rep showing videos and, and breaking down what I do. So I don't have to employ anyone or take a bunch of calls myself to actually get people to be interested, right? So that's the sales process and the daily workflow. So this is getting into like the actual specifics of once someone has signed up, how do I manage their system and what metrics do I look at? And then I'm also going to talk about how do I actually optimize the ads in the system so they keep getting results. So I really just go into their Facebook ad account and I look at number of leads, cost per lead, number of appointments, and cost per appointment. And I toggle between these on these three time scales. So I'll go into an account, see how many leads they have just across their entire account. Maybe they started six months ago. I look at just the maximum time scale so I can see what's their number of leads. So whenever you toggle this uh, particular you know, filter, it basically shows these other you know, metrics here, right? So I don't go literally one by one. It's just number of leads, maximum you know, uh, time frame, and then that'll show me what their cost per lead is over the maximum time frame, number of appointments, maximum time frame, and then cost per appointment. And then I just rotate those to make sure over the past 14 days, you know, how has their account performed? You know, are they getting at least a lead a day or two leads a day, depending on their budget and markets? And then I do the same thing for seven day. Because if you just go in day by day, you know, you're, you potentially will get no leads, right? If you look at just today's, um, you know, ad performance, right? So you need to look at it like high level view, a 14 day view, seven day view. And then obviously you can look at that specific day or last few days just to make sure that the ads are running, the accounts aren't banned, anything like that. Um, and this is this is what I do. I just check this. I go through all you know 18, 20 of those accounts that I have, and it really doesn't take a lot of time. Um, where the time kind of comes into play for optimizing the the system is these eight ways to optimize the ad and overall account performance. So, number one, these are all different ways that I will. These are the levers that I pull if an ad account isn't performing as well as I think it can. So one, I may adjust the placement. So maybe we're targeting Facebook only. And I want to I want to add in another ad set that tests advantage placements, which is basically Facebook, IG, audience network, um, and I may test the placements, right? And then um, another thing I may do is adjust the audience. So most of our our accounts are performing really well without any sort of targeting. Um, you know, th these are really ways to do and optimize the account performance, but. Like I said, some of these I, I do more than others. Adjusting the audience with the, the interest isn't something I do a lot because a lot of the time the no targeting outperforms it, but this is one thing you can do, right? And then adjusting the ad creative itself. So you may need a new image, right? You may need to test some new images to um, you know get leads and you may need a new video as well. And so adjusting the ad creative, right? And then you may potentially need to incorporate new ad copy, right? So new written word on the actual ad to target specifically a specific type of lead or something, which I'll actually show you, you know, right below this, but new ad copy, right? And you can incorporate this with dynamic creative where you have proven ad copy and then maybe you want to test another ad, uh, ad copy to see how that performs. And Facebook will just rotate, you know, all of these, most of these, um, you know, uh, like controls through dynamic creative, like this will get rotated automatically with dynamic creative. 
so will this, and so will this. So you really just are in charge of putting in quality inputs, right? Good creatives, good copy, good headlines. And then from there, Facebook will rotate it and you'll just get real feedback from the data, right? Not me or a client. You want to see what's going on. And then I'll talk about how I get feedback and things I do, like how do I get feedback and then where do I adjust things once I get feedback from a client, right? Um, and then these things are go high level optimizations. So this, these all exist within the Facebook ads manager. Um, but these basically are dependent on the, the sub account. So maybe let's say someone's cost per lead is uh, like, let's say their cost per lead is, is rising, right? And I've tried all of these things and usually these things are enough to lower the lead cost. Sometimes you just have to refresh um, an ad account and then uh, like refresh an ad set and then literally the cost just drops. I just had one. I did that with uh, last week. Their ads, their ad account was performing really well. But over time, the cost was slowly kind of creeping up. I duplicated, um, you know, the the proven ad set that was already generating leads. I uh, changed the placement and I added in some new copy, and just like that, it it dropped the the lead cost, right? Um, but if those don't work, which usually they do, you can add or remove qualifying survey questions. So, when would you add a qualifying survey question? Well, maybe the client's lead cost is really low and they're getting a lot of volume. And maybe the feedback they're giving you is like, hey, I'm getting leads that maybe aren't as motivated or serious or whatever. I can then go into the survey within high level and add in additional qualifying questions so that when people are you know, at the survey page, instead of just filling it out with three questions, maybe it's now six, right? And their cost may potentially go up a little bit, but I've seen clients say, yeah, I've, I've noticed a difference based on these questions, right? So I'll add it, right? If, if the cost is affordable, and potentially we're, we're getting less motivation. And then I'll remove them if cost is increasing and um, quality still isn't there. Because if quality still isn't there and you just add more and more questions and they already have a lot, then you're just gonna raise the cost. But if you remove some, maybe focus on volume for a period of time, maybe through the volume, they get lead flow, they get some momentum, and then through, the, through getting volume, they get you know quality, right? So you kind of toggle between these two things. Uh, and I like to find the sweet spot of volume and quality because if you go too far either way, um, you know, I've seen clients, I've, you can go on my channel, I've seen clients close deals with the most basic form and then I've seen clients close deals with a super long form, right? So you just have to be aware of like, okay, the, the ads are good, everything's performing, maybe quality is dropping, all right, let's add some more qualifying questions, okay, and then in this situation, maybe we're getting... Um, you know, our cost is going up and we have a long form survey, but it's still not equating to quality. All right, let's lighten up the form, get some volume in there um, because you'll still get conversions from, like I said, either a long form or, or a medium form. So you're just kind of playing with these two things based on the feedback from the clients. And, um, you know, my main thing that I go off is, is the closed deals, which I'll talk about. But then the last two is you could DQ leads based on survey questions. So maybe um, for example, with our clients, you know, none of them work with like mobile homes because sometimes mobile homes are on leased land and they literally can't do anything. So we may put in a filter within high levels conditional logic that just DQs leads when they um, submit that they have a mobile home or maybe they submit that it's listed with an agent. We could just DQ those so they'll stop going into the system. And then lastly, which is more advanced and really you should only do this when you've got a good budget and you're already getting leads and deals you can start playing with the conversion API and filtering leads based on specific survey questions. So an example could be, um, let's say that, you know, the, a client gets, you know, some, some deals, let's say the client gets five deals or something and all of those leads that, you know, filled out the survey and equated to close deals, maybe they said they needed to sell ASAP, right? So if the client is, um, and when I say the, the lead said they need to sell ASAP, I'm referring to like a survey question. So maybe if the client's already getting leads, they have a good budget, everything's already working, we can afford to basically filter and, and attempt to send only the leads that are saying they need to sell ASAP to Facebook so that it starts to learn off of that particular event. But amongst all of these, right, these are just the levers to, to pull for somebody that's running ads for clients. The number one place to get feedback is the closed deals, right? Because you can get leads at a good cost and appointments, all that stuff you can get all day, right? But the number one place is closing deals. So um, this is something that actually happened literally yesterday. So a client got three deals under contract, 
And so what I, do, what I did was I analyzed the survey submission to look for patterns within the surveys and then adjust and align the ads to target more of those types of leads. So here you can see a screenshot. It says, you know, yesterday a client got three deals in one day. So this is a message I got from a client and he said he got three deals under contract just today. And so what did I do? I created a smart list inside of, um, you know, this client's go high level and I filtered it, you know, from the, from the leads that came through that particular day. And these all came literally like, I think today is the 12th. So one of them came, um, or this was when they booked their appointment. So they all came through on the 10th or the 11th, but this is uh, where this stuff gets really cool. So there were three deals, right? This is the best feedback you could get, like not cost per lead, not cost per appointment, not click through rate. None of that stuff matters if you're getting deals at a, at a profit, right? That you're willing to pay. So what I did was I filtered those, you know, from that specific set that he was referring to and I looked at the survey questions. So one of the questions we ask is what's their reason for selling? And so if you look here out of the three that were contracts, two of them said financial hardship and then one of them said divorce. See, financial, financial, divorce. And then how soon would they like to sell? They all said ASAP, right? And then in addition to that, behind on their mortgage payments, two of the three said that they were behind by three months or more and then one of them said no. So I look at all of that and then I looked at the sources. So inside of, you know, Go High Level, I have UTM set up and these basically just track, um, you know, what campaign they came from, what placement and then what ad. And so you can see here within the actual source that these are the three deals. One came from Facebook, one came from Instagram and one came from Audience Network. So you can see Facebook Mobile Reels, Instagram Feed, and then this one says AN, which means Audience Network. So what did I do when I saw that? Well, I created ad copy images and videos to speak to those problems. So for example, uh, are you going through a divorce or you're going through some financial hardship and then, you know, the rest of the ad copy, right? And so now we have these, you know, this ad copy based on feedback from actual valuable leads that turned into contracts and also all three of these booked their own appointment through our funnel. So that's another commonality is they all booked appointments. Two of the three said financial hardship. One said divorce. Um, how soon they would like to sell was all ASAP. And then two of the three said they were behind on their mortgage payments. So now that gives me feedback of like, okay, this is this for whatever the reason, right? This is what they submitted. And this turned into a contract for um, my actual client, right? And so then I created ad copy and then I created, um, like I said, images and, and uh, video that's I haven't received yet. Um, that speaks to these so we can start to test that. Now, obviously this is just three, right? Like it's statistically not really significant. Um, I'm at the point where now I have, you know, thousands of leads that I can analyze. And so, you know, I can find these commonalities between all these deals that ended up closing and, you know, look at these different things and then start to shift the ads, the copy, the images to really hone in on these types of situations, right? Because the more targeted you can get with that um, and the pixel starts to learn from that, you know, now you're really, you're really honing in on what's valuable to the client, right? Not just cost per lead or any of that stuff, right? So lastly here for streamlined communication. So I have 20 private Slack channels and each client gets their own private channel. And inside the channel, it's just me and the client and the team. And all communication is stored here. So it's super organized. I don't deal with getting texts and calls and then someone messaging me on Facebook or Instagram. That way I don't have to think about how to provide updates or get feedback. And if I make this a little smaller, it'll go on the same page. Um, but you could see here, this is just my new breed investor Slack workspace. And then these are all the channels. So this is client one, client two, client three, client four, et cetera. And then if I just click on the channel, I'll see the, the thread between me and that client and all the updates I provided, all that good stuff. And it's also just good to have record for all this. Slack allows you to just store all that stuff. There's obviously other systems you could use, but this is what I use. And then every few days I check in with the clients and get feedback and make changes, making sure quality is good, making sure they're happy with the service, make sure they don't have any questions. And it's really that simple. Like just ask them, hey, how are we doing? And that's it, right? And then depending on what they say, I will discern, right, with my experience of which one of these to do, right? Maybe it's a combination, maybe it's nothing at all. Because um, sometimes, you know, the ads are performing and it's just like a matter of time before the quality kind of comes through. So I'll either make a change based on the feedback or, you know, and I'll choose a combination of these or one of these. Um, 
or I may just leave it and, you know, tell them, hey, everything's looking good. Let's let's let it run for a bit longer. And then, you know, if I notice anything, I'll come back to you and then, you know, we'll make a change. But these are really the only ways or things to do. I mean, once you have a proven system with copy and headline and proven funnel, you really don't want to start changing the core pieces to the actual funnel. Right. So that is it for this video. I hope this was valuable to you guys. And um, yeah, if you guys are interested in running you know this type of a business model these are really the core uh pieces you need to make it work and yeah i just wanted to share this with you guys so see you in the next video bye, -bye.